I was in my uh, Menards the other day, which um, for those of you that are not from the Midwest, it's kind of like a Midwest version of uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. And they had these cool outlets that uh, made me decide to start my next project. Let me show you what it is. It's actually a, a standard uh, 120 volt outlet, but also um, it has two USB ports here and here. So this is a combo USB port and 120 volt outlet. I've got the uh, table removed and the cushions and everything. So now we're gonna, and I've removed the screws. So I'm gonna pull the uh, cover off the uh, bench here. Get that out of the way. And when you look at that, can you believe this? You got to see this. This is how well these RVs are made. We just got this wire here, which goes to the propane sensor from the factory, just laying in the bottom. Isn't that nice? The way you take these off is you just snap these covers. They're just snapped on. And then, um, Geez, look at that. They did a really great job in cutting that. Who the heck cut that thing? So, um, basically what you do is you just take and unscrew here and here and then this whole thing should just pop right off. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing because my light even isn't uh, working very good with these dark areas. Okay, you can see here that these are just little these are attached to those screws, so as you tighten it, this uh, little toggle flips open and holds it against the wall, and then as you loosen it, it flips back. Um, and you can see it. Uh, see, you can see where they where they didn't get the thing pressed in all the way. In fact, part of this is I don't think this is a very good brand. What what is this? P.S. What's that made? Made in China. Yeah. Oh, Pass, Pass and Seymour. Okay, well, <clears throat> even so, uh, I'm gonna, I'm not liking this uh, outlet too much, and hopefully they didn't permanently damage it by <clears throat> having it bent like that for so long, so. I'm going to pop the cover on, on the back cover and look inside. Well, I got the back off, but unfortunately, I uh, broke it. Uh, one of the tabs broke off, which shouldn't happen. Uh, but perhaps it was under too much stress by being installed incorrectly. And I actually like the Hubble boxes, I think, better than these Pass and Seymour's. So, I'll re if I replace this with another one of these style, I'll, I'll use the hubble that I've got. Uh, and you can see what happened is they didn't get the white wire, especially and probably the black wire, they didn't get it seated deep enough so that the cover would close properly. And uh, so, you know, they uh, they just didn't do very good work. So we may just end up putting our other box in here. And by the way, what I have to do is um, for the outlet that I'm going to put in, I got to use a standard residential style box because it's not these goofy, um, silly things that they put in RVs. Okay, I'm recording. Well, here's, here's the other style that I've got, and this is made by Wirecon, and I think it's a Hubble brand. Well, I guess I'm not positive. But the, the cover pops off just like the other one, and it still has the, um, you know, screw-in toggles like the other one. But for this one, to get, take this off, you run a screwdriver through here, and this this is much beefier. Than those little skinny things on on the uh, on the other on the Pass the Seymour, and when you pull that open, you can see the same thing. 
basically um, when you put a wire in here it just goes into one of these slots and then uh, with this one uh, it's got a lot longer tines on the uh, cover so they're gonna push this push this in a lot more solidly now they do make a tool for this but what the manufacturer here says when and what I'll do is I'll uh, on the web page I'll put a, <clears throat> a link I found to a PDF file on how to install these uh, they recommend that you can use either a C-clamp or uh, a pair of channel lock pliers as long as you put maybe a piece of cardboard over the front so you don't mar the finish and then to help push this down but anyway if I do replace this box which I have to now because I broke it I'm going to replace it with this one but I'm also looking at uh, not doing that and I'm looking at putting I got to put this type of box in because the um, like I said before the outlet is not a speed outlet so you know it takes this this is more of a residential kind it still has the same toggles you know as, as before however the box is a little bit bigger and it still won't fit so I'm still gonna have to do some trimming some trim work and by the way I should mention that of course I do have power off here when I'm doing this so you know that's not an issue one of the things though I'd like to mention is this use of solid wire uh, we've been long we, we just started in the RV uh, vacationing and we've been boaters for 15 years or so and the thing with boats is that you would never ever see uh, these wire con boxes or speed boxes whatever you want to call them or especially solid wire in a boat because frankly it's illegal and what I mean by illegal is that um, 33 CFR 183 I remember it quite well is a US Coast Guard regulation that's which is federal law basically states that only stranded wire can be used in boats and the reason for that is as you as you're tooling around in the water any vibration and things like that the solid stuff will flex and weaken and eventually break so any solid wiring in, in any area where there's a lot of vibration uh, is subject to breakage so it kind of makes me wonder why are they putting this stuff in RVs I mean don't RVs have similar vibrations to a boat you know was tooling down the road at 60 miles an hour hitting potholes and things I mean I'd have to think of it, that it would um, so the only thing I can fathom is you know they don't care uh, if you set fire to your RV because you can just jump out of the thing I suppose whereas in a boat you know if you set fire to your boat and you're 100 miles offshore you know you're really in a serious problem so maybe it's just a maybe it's just the degree of risk uh, for the occupants I don't know but the first thing I immediately disliked with these RVs when I saw this was was this, was this um, solid wiring and also even though this is low voltage this wire lane in here like that if if the Coast Guard saw that in you know because they do inspections in boat places um, they would issue recall I mean this would not be acceptable in a boat uh, because in a boat everything has got to be tied down and I mean you got to have those little cable clips along the way or something like that this would never fly uh, I should say fly this would never float in the boat uh, Coast Guard would shut down the company and <laughs> maybe we need something like that with the RV industry because what I'm seeing so far is shoddy workmanship, shoddy materials, shoddy practices, you name it, is shoddy. So I, I guess it's better than a tent, and I guess you you got to think of it as a tent on wheels and nothing much more. Anyway, I'm done with my rant, and I'm going to continue with my project. Well, I decided that since I busted that other uh, speed box that uh, i got to install the other one, so I might as well just go ahead and uh, put another branch circuit in so I'm gonna put the um, the USB uh, enabled outlet here on the end and then on this one they didn't do a very good job of trimming it or cutting the opening rather and the other box won't quite fit uh, so I gotta just trim that straighten up the edges really so that's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna cut trim that up and cut a hole in here 
and uh, I'm actually going to use a new tool to do this, uh, which should work pretty good. Okay, here's uh, the cut, and I mean it cut pretty good for something like that. The only downside of this tool is it tends to get hot, so you know I don't know how long you can. I guess you had. I guess you have to hold it back further, but I don't know. It worked. Holes cut, and let's see how this fits here now. Hey, how about that? It looks perfect. And I tell you what, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to seat one wire first and then come back and seat the other wire. And the way you seat the wire is you essentially um, you still make sure that you see the white and black and then it's marked white and black here so this has to go upside down like so and then basically now it does say that if you don't have the tool the instructions suggest putting a piece of cardboard over to protect the box and then you can use a C-clamp or um, channel locks. Okay, we've got it clamped all the way down. And I'm going to try to do it one more time on this side just for safety's sake. There we go. Alright. So, we're going to pop the cover open again here. And then just see how well these are cinched down. And it looks like they're, uh, looks like they're seated for a while. Um, I don't know that you could ask for anything better. Um, looks like they're these at least are pretty much bottomed out. So I think we can call this probably a success. Last wiring steps here is to connect the uh, outlet with a USB and always make sure that you get it correct. Usually um, anytime there's a, a uh, plain metal white wire, this is on the white side and the brass goes on the hot side and it also says white and hot here as well. So um, you simply uh, feed the wire in and with this style this is a pretty positive clamping system because it clamps it um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, as this tightens up, it tightens, a plate comes through. Okay, and then... All it remains is the ground, and the ground's the same way. It's got a little, little plate in there. And what we'll try to do here is bend the wire like this, make a little hook in it. See, probably should have done the ground first. Would have been easier to get in, but there we, there we go. Now I always bend the hook so that it's in the direction of the tightening the screw. However, with a plate like this, it's not as much of an issue as it would be if it didn't have one, which not all outlets do. Now the thing is, is how do you want to orient this? Um, it's got a TR here and a TR upside down, so you can put it either way. 
but for the USB the lettering is up if it's like this so we're gonna go by the convention of up is up so looks like uh, we got power applied to the uh, to the outlet and we're measuring well, if I get it lined up here actually just uh, about 125 volts or so almost too much voltage but uh, it remains to be seen how calibrated this uh, voltmeter is um, there is a little bit of static electricity on it so um, I guess if I bring it yeah see I can bring it down to there I mean that's that's pretty good quality isn't it um, anyway one uh, thing I found is that you know since this is kind of a <clears throat> little flimsy panel it's when you pull this in and out um, these are tamper proof outlets which from my understanding you have to have nowadays so basically any outlet built or made since I don't know when um, is going to be that way so let's take my iPod here and let's just see uh, there we go we got that running now this light is supposed to come on and I guess it I guess the LED is on but it's just yeah it's on just a little bit difficult to see but anyway uh, you know it powered up the charge port here on the the uh, iPod and so there we go we have uh, a combination uh, USB and um, power outlet and uh, that's going to be kind of a nice little addition I think to the uh, motorhome so now all I got to do is take care of my mess and button things up wiring is done and I have improved the uh, layout of the wiring from just laying in there so that should uh, make me feel better here well here are my final thoughts and recap of the uh, project um, I uh, was thinking about putting it here in the far corner but um, I uh, busted the other outlet trying to uh, look into it and although I could have replaced that outlet with uh, just the same wiring configuration uh, I decided if I'm going to go inside and open it up and everything I might as well rewire the whole thing so that's what I did and then I added uh, this outlet since it was uh, the coach doesn't have a lot of outlets and doesn't have a lot of accessible outlets so this becomes really the only accessible floor outlet we've got in the uh, main salon uh, the only other outlet is actually up here um, under the kitchen uh, we do have some outlets hidden in the cupboards and we do have some in the master bedroom but this this was the only outlet in the front and so now we have another one that's a little more convenient and this outlet is um, a combination uh, 5 volt USB and 120 volt and you can actually uh, if you have a slim enough plug you could probably use them both at the same time there's nothing in the instructions says that you can't and um, so right now we're uh, charging the iPod and uh, I think this is uh, going to be a nice addition to our RV.